will be put uh, will be put there and uh, uh, now another presentation by uh, um, uh, uh, you you also have uh, training materials created by uh, the uh, uh, epidoc consortium some of which uh, uh, you will see some of them are uh, also uh, available online and we will give you links when you can see all of them we will be probably not be using all of them so uh, this is another presentation that uh, deals a bit more thoroughly with the rules of uh, uh, xml we already highlighted the most important rules uh, but uh, there is more to it uh, than this uh, uh, so yes um, we already uh, went through this xml is made up of uh, plain text so yes, uh, uh, as uh, I said, we'll be using an uh, XML editor because it's uh, really uh, much more convenient to use an XML editor. All the elements and their attributes and the values to the attributes are highlighted in different colors. There is indentation, so you can more easily see what you're encoding. And uh, uh, there is uh, there are uh, signs where you have done something wrong, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But basically, what XML is, this is plain text. So if you wish so, you can open it uh, in a, a textual editor such as uh, Notepad, or uh, even in your browser. This is plain text, and. Uh, in this plain text, the meta text, the tags, are usually uh, uh, encompassed by pointy brackets, which means that if you have pointy brackets in your text, uh, you might not use them because uh, uh, the, mm, the processing then of the file will try to read them as uh, XML tags. So try to avoid these when you put text in your uh, XML files, these should be preserved only for the meta text of the uh, opening and closing tags. There are, uh, uh, there are some epigraphic sigla, which are usually represented by uh, pointy brackets, uh, but uh, they are encoded uh, differently than that in order to uh, have pointy brackets as a result uh, in your uh, uh, epigraphic edition, and we will see how this is done. Also, uh, escape the use of uh, uh, ampersand. So the uh, angle brackets uh, are uh, can be rendered as uh, uh, ampersand LT, uh, semicolon, and ampersand GT, semicolon, which stands for less than and greater than uh, as uh, mathematical symbols. But there are also other ways to uh, encode this. Uh, usually in uh, XML, what is uh, uh, introduced by this ampersand symbol is uh, the so-called uh, entity. We will not deal with uh, declaring entities in our uh, XML code, but if you happen to have an ampersand in your uh, in your uh, in your uh, text, don't use simply the uh, sign for ampersand, but use this ampersand itself, and then AMP semicolon. The thing that we said about uh, uh, values and uh, attributes, and here something uh, new that uh, spaces, white spaces are significant in XML. Between the name of your element and any possible attributes within the opening tag of the element, you should put a space. So uh, if you have an element called paragraph and you want to indicate an attribute type equals new, make sure to have a white space between P and type. Otherwise, it will be read as an, uh, an element name. P type new will be perceived by the processing uh, uh, program of uh, uh, the XML file as an element name. And also spaces between textual strings between words or parts of words uh, is also significant in XML. If you put space in between words, uh, and if you put space in between words which are encoded, here you see encoded words uh, which are uh, all tagged with the element W, which stands for word, uh, the presence of white space 
will be then uh, present in the output of your document. However, the type and amount of white space is not significant. You can have a single white space, you can have a new line, you can have like 10 white spaces, they will be all read by the processing as one. So uh, white space is significant in as much as it is present or absent, but how much white space you put in between strings in your XML document is not significant. Not that you would want to do it probably, but uh, uh, yes, we need to say this. Also, in your files, you can have comments, which are usually highlighted in green by uh, the uh, Oxygen software and by uh, other uh, XML editors. And they are also enclosed in uh, pointy brackets, in angle brackets, but uh, they start with an exclamation mark and two dashes. Uh, this is textual content that uh, you can put in your document as note to self while encoding something. This is a content which is not supposed to be then processed by, uh, um, by the front end that uh, processes and visualizes your uh, XMLs. This is content that is not visualized, but uh, it is helpful if you want to make a note to self while encoding something or a note to somebody else if you uh, if you are working uh, uh, in team. And uh, you can also use it to comment out, as they say, a part of your code. Uh, if, uh, in, you want to preserve a part in your, uh, of your code uh, and uh, um, deal with it later, but uh, uh, you, you think, for example, that uh, something is not uh, uh, right, uh, in exactly this part of your XML uh, file, and you need to leave it for uh, uh, later to um, code anew or edit or do something like this. Uh, so you can put this uh, exclamation mark into uh, dashes at the opening element of the uh, respective uh, part of the code that you want to uh, preserve but uh, not process, and uh, it becomes a comment. So uh, it becomes uh, it, something which is present in the file, but it is ignored by processing and uh, copying. So yes, uh, once again about well formedness, all open tags must close, provided that they are not empty. Any characters uh, such as uh, uh, pointy brackets and uh, the ampersand must uh, not be used, they must be escaped. All the elements must be wholly contained by all ancestors. The whole document must be contained by one root element, which in our case will be TI, uh, because uh, uh, Epidoc is a subset of uh, uh, TI XML, and attribute values may not contain markup, which means that uh, attribute values must be alphanumeric strings. That is to say, uh, they should consist of only uh, digits and uh, mm, letters of the alphabet. Some commonwealth forbidness errors, I would call them rather problems. Uh, as we said, uh, all the daughter elements must be contained by uh, the parent element. But quite often uh, in the documents that are processed by XML, we have uh, things which are hard to deal with. For example, uh, you have a, a book and you have pages in this book and the texts that, uh, text that runs uh, on these pages may have paragraphs. And of course, it so happens from time to time that the paragraph starts on one page and ends on the next page. What do we do then? If we try to uh, mark up the structure of the book, 
with uh, uh, the root element book and uh, then the daughter element page and then the sub element to page which is paragraph if a paragraph starts on uh, page one and ends on page two uh, at first we might think that uh, we must open the paragraph element here and close it uh, uh, down there but this will this will create an error in well formedness because it will violate the principle that all the daughter elements must be open and closed within the parent element. So you cannot, uh, you, you cannot close the page element before closing the paragraph element. So what would be the solution here? There are several things that can be made. And uh, this is how uh, uh, Epidoc XML operates also, we will see. Uh, especially if we uh, reach to the point when we speak about text parts. Uh, one of the um, most straightforward uh, uh, solutions to this problem, but uh, uh, not necessarily the best one, is to pretend that the paragraph closes before uh, the page finishes. So you close the element paragraph before you close the uh, page uh, element uh, just uh, for the sake of well formedness of the document and then you reopen it anew uh, when you uh, start a new page uh, element but uh, mm, this is a rather crude solution because uh, it does not conform to the fact that we still have in the uh, source document that we're encoding we uh, still have one paragraph that starts on page one and ends on page two. We can insert attributes to these paragraph elements, which will deal with the, the situation better. For example, we open the element paragraph and we close it before closing the page, but uh, uh, we uh, also provide it with element part, with, with attribute part. So paragraph part start, and then when we start a new page, we open a new daughter element within which, uh, which reads paragraph with an attribute part end. And then when we submit our XML file to processing, we uh, state that all the paragraph elements that uh, contain the attribute start and end should be put together in the output. So you have a page break which runs in the middle of the paragraph, but the paragraph stands as one. Also, the most elegant solution is not to have uh, ordinary elements which read page and you need to open uh, uh, the page tag and then close the page tag, but you have empty element, which does not have an opening and a closing tag, uh, which, have, which has only one tag, and which is very convenient for uh, designating borders. We have an empty element which reads page begin, and it does not interfere with the other ordinary elements which have opening and uh, closing tags, so you can safely put the empty page begin element in the middle of your uh, paragraph uh, uh, element, in, it would not affect the well formedness of the document. All these decisions are valid, they will produce good XML, but some of them, for the purposes of uh, uh, your documents in particular, might be preferred. This is why there are ready made schemas and templates uh, which have. Uh, uh, made uh, the work of the digital epigraphers uh, easier because uh, uh, you simply uh, take the skeleton of, uh, um, of an XML file and fill in the information that uh, you need to uh, fill in. And, of course, uh, your empty elements which uh, uh, designate page borders can be numbered. You have page begin number one, number two, number three, and these numbers can then be visualized, which is usually what uh, uh, we do with the 
uh, lines of an inscription that are also numbered. And uh, most of the uh, processing scenarios for uh, epigraphic uh, XML uh, follow the convention to visualize each fifth line, as in uh, uh, usually in epigraphic publications. But uh, in your visualization scenario, the way you visualize your XML content is called uh, visualization scenario. You can choose uh, other conventions, for example, to uh, visualize uh, every uh, second uh, line or even every, uh, every line. But uh, the information is there in your source document and the visualization of this information is a whole other story. Uh, you may uh, want to uh, number your uh, pages or lines uh, or uh, textual parts even without choosing, choosing to visualize this uh, numbering at all. So, here are some common well formedness errors. Can you tell what is the error in the first instance, instance, which is in the first bullet? Somebody from uh, the audience can write in the chat or you can uh, speak up if you wish. Where exactly in this code there's something wrong? Yes, the attribute, the attribute of uh, the, the value of the attribute cannot have anything except alphanumeric characters. Uh, probably this uh, person who has encoded uh, the value in this way wants to signify that they want uh, uh, this uh, value to be in italics, but this is not the proper way to do it. You can only have the name Theodotus uh, here. By the way, this is an obsolete uh, way to encode uh, uh, personal names, but uh, we will uh, go back to that. What about the second one, which is an old English text uh, with uh, some uh, uh, editorial uh, uh, figma in it? What's the problem here? in our second instance. Again, again yes. the use of angular brackets. Yes. Uh, this piece of text contains some editorial sigla in the form of uh, angular brackets, but uh, as we said, uh, these angular brackets in your text should not be used because then this pair will be read as the opening tag of an element and the mistake that you will receive from the uh, element there is not closed within parent which means that uh, it uh, reads this string of character as an element and it expects it expects it uh, to be uh, to also have the a closing tag to this element and even if you provide it with a closing tag uh, like a slash there uh, you will have an error that uh, uh, such an element is not uh, permitted in your uh, in your schema. So avoid using angular brackets. And what about the third one? Sign between between Reynolds and Rusha, how it is called? Yes, you should not this, use uh, this ampersand. Ampersand, yes. Shall, uh, sh shall not be used here. So in your text, if you, well, uh, usually in your epigraphic text you would not have an ampersand, but maybe in the bibliography, uh, uh, depending on the format of bibliography, you have signs like this. Uh, so it should be avoided because it treats the name Rusha as uh, an entity, and it is not. So, yes, about the schema validation, uh, I forgot to say, but uh, here it is written, that uh, the convenient thing about having the schema against which your files will validate 
uh, is also good because uh, uh, as you uh, as you go, as you as you try to encode things, uh, the schema will uh, uh, kind of guide you to the process. If you if you start typing a an, uh, an element, if you put an angular bracket, it will give you a list of all the possible elements that can be contained uh, in uh, this exact part of your XML document. And uh, also, if you uh, uh, hover your mouse over an element name, over the opening tag of an element, uh, uh, it will give you a short description of what the, this uh, element uh, does. So, yes.